crown of the Immaculate. Are you so determined to die? One last chance, villains! Bow down and acknowledge your king! Your god! Hell no.
pesado. to be one of the mightiest cards I ever faced.
done with you, Zolfrey. That should be the last light warden, isn't it? That should be the last one. That should be the last one, isn't it? Here's live the last of light. The light. A dramatic transformation resulted in, in the scene of emer within emerging the claim dominance, I assume. We have a secure escape route. Do what you must. Well. Looks like we missed it all yet again. With your powers, you could have done so much good. Is that fathery? Uh, it was what it used to be anyway. I see. It's coming over then. Indeed. Well, you're not really a god. That is why I was born as man and city to both. But why? I don't get it. I kept the people safe. They respected me. Worship me. How can this be? Even as a Light Warden, your defeat was but an inevitable. Why is so much power, though? Why do you have so much power, though? What a beast. As a warrior of darkness, I bring light, bring night back to this world. At long last, a daunting task is over. We saved the world. At least, I didn't get a massive headache that time. The sky. At least I didn't get a mess headache this time, so that was a relief. <sighs> oh no. 
Not now. Fools! Were it not for my decisive action, the whole city would have been overrun, razed to the ground. Yet they dare to complain about casualties? Spare me. I'll wager they were put up to it by those wretches who seek to usurp me. They're stirring up the citizenry. But if they think I will yield to the likes of them, they are gravely mistaken. To be subjected to such deplorable treatment, such ingratitude. You have my sympathy, sir. You do so much good for this city, and you could do so much more were you not surrounded by fools. Oh no. Don't tell me this was her thing all along. Oh. Who are you? You're not supposed to be in here. My apologies for the intrusion. But I come bearing a proposal, one that will ensure the longevity of your reign. Wow. So it was him all along who set this all up. It's no wonder why Lord Warren came to be. But give me the word, sir, and I will bring hither a light warden. Yeah, I... Oh my word. Why am I sh why should I be so su surprised by this? By giving its power to the babe within your lady wife's womb, we shall create a transcendent being, a king to rule over all. And as sire to the king, your authority will never again be in question. I'm guessing it took a proposal. A man and a senator. <laughs> Amazing. Before my Vorthri, they behave as docile pets. With this gift, my line should be guaranteed power for perpetuity. We shall rule the whole world. But they're gone, right? By all Hunting? means, sir. United under Yulmor's banner, men will cease fighting and abandon their ambitions. Thus, they will grow fat and complacent, and in their sloth, seal your supremacy. It's just that I thought. Just as I thought. It was his doing all along. Oh! Are you all right? Say something! Oh no. She cannot contain the light. She's beginning to turn. Oh no. If you've ought up your sleeve, now is the time. It's changing back. power of every light warden is too terrible a burden for any one soul to bear. Exarch? And so I shall relieve you of it. Fusion of power to the Crystal Tower and use it to travel to other worlds. As I have dreamed of doing ever since I first learned of their existence. Who would choose to remain here in this dying realm when they might go elsewhere and begin anew? Not I. And thus, thus did I use you. No, no, 
I don't believe you! It doesn't make sense! Damn you! We won't let you do with her as you please! Do not interfere! Please, I beseech you all, let him go! You knew of this, Uriangé. But why? It is all a fiction. Such vaguely defined acts of teleportation stand no chance of success. The Exarch will never live to see another world, as he knows only too well. Then, what does he mean to do? He means to take the light with him into the rift, where he will die. From the beginning, he intended to sacrifice himself to save our friend and Norvrend. No. Exar. At journey's end, an opportunistic thief makes off with the hero's prize. A paltry way to end a chapter, I concede. Yet your tale will continue, and my role in it will scarcely be remembered. Worry not. Whatever should become of me, I will be happy and free, safe in the knowledge that I have played my part. I knew it! Here I thank you for fighting for this world, for believing. Fare you well, my friend, my inspiration. Damn it, Emmett! He's about to finish! Only those who possess the royal eye of the Alagan Imperial line are capable of controlling the Crystal Tower. Such individuals do not exist in the first. Therefore, in all likelihood, the Exarch arrived here with the Tower. This much I have surmised. Yet I could not discern his grand scheme. To think that he went through all this trouble for the sake of a single hero. It's almost admirable in its absurdity. Alas, it is not your grand scheme that will succeed, but ours. You bastard! Stay put. Your friend is still alive. But whether he remains so depends on you. Shall I expand? What a disappointment you turned out to be. Excuse me? I placed my faith in you. Let myself believe that you could contain the light. But look at you now. Halfway to becoming a monster. You are unworthy of my patronage. Patronage? You are out of your mind. It was you who created Vothery, wasn't it? <sighs> I am an Asian. My heart's sole desire is to usher in the great rejoining. 
A hundred years ago, I entrusted my comrade Logriff with the task of increasing light sway over this world. This we sought to do by manipulating heroes. When that failed to achieve the desired result, I created Vorthry. But thanks to your meddling, that too has ended in failure. What was your true purpose in approaching us? By your twelve, boy, have I not told you before that everything I said was the truth? You were specimens by which I might gauge man's potential as it stands. I genuinely had an interest in you, genuinely considered taking you on as allies. Provided she could contain and control the light. If not, then she, and by extension you, would be of no use to me. It was as simple as that. So, we've been found wanting. How disheartened. But even had we fulfilled your conditions, there was no guarantee that we would cooperate. What then? Then I simply kill you all. At the very least, it would restore the world to the way it was before you went about trouncing like wounds really nilly. Suffice it to say, it would be most inconvenient to have all that light taken away. And I would be lying if I were to claim his actions didn't have me worried. to feast on their sweet, sweet ether. Those few with the will left to fight may rise up against you, but before your absolute might, they will quickly know despair. There is no hope. We are finished. Mankind is finished. Oh, the irony. What Vorfri achieved through bliss, you achieved through despair. But I have overstayed my welcome. I shall look forward to seeing you bring the world to its knees, hero. Damn it, damn it. Exoc! Damn it, damn it. I have naught to show for all the time and effort I invested in you. He is a small token for my troubles. I did not expect that I could learn aught from man, but I may yet learn something from all the knowledge he had hoarded for his precious hero. Someone save me. I pity you, I do. Your friends are now your foes. If you do not kill them, they will kill you. At least help me get rid of this freaking light warden. When it all becomes too much to bear, seek me out at my abode in the dark depths of the tempest. There, you may complete your descent into madness with some dignity, far from prying eyes. Fused. Till then, I bid you farewell. Eat. Oh, I'm still alive and intact. Light is a bit of a bearing. Ah, finally. I'm burnt. 
how long do you stay? What happened? After you collapsed, Emmett Silk vanished. Then Reen did what she could to stay the raging of the light within your body. Thanks to her, you're still you. But she's only delayed the inevitable. What now? You delayed the inevitable too. But how? You too delayed the inevitable, but how? You're not going to like what you see. But you still need to see it. No. God damn it. It's all for naught? All of that. It's like this all over. The whole of Norvrat is shrouded in light again. And it's because of you. And the power you absorb from the Wardens. No one knows but your friends. When they carried you down from the mountain, they told everyone waiting below that they didn't understand why the light had returned. Now they're out there trying to allay the people's fears. Are searching for a way to save you. If you're well enough to be up, you're well enough to get some fresh air. Better that than stewing in here. Go on. Go. There's gotta be someone there who can help me, though. Somebody. Like, somehow. There's gonna be somebody who's gonna help me get out of this. God's to hell. As if that wasn't enough. As if it wasn't enough as it is. What do I need to get rid of all of this light and let the dark return?
think it's take Demo Hill. Brought the damn bundles light back. Absorb too much light. This is what happens. Although Ryan was appreciated enough to s the force to delay the inevitable while they search for cure, that might explain why nobody was. That explain why they are not here. But the Exarch, though, teleported away, just snatched away. God damn it. I knew it. And it was Gary all along. It's just hiding underneath that mask. Just underneath that hood all along. I knew what I had to be in. But God damn it. Well, it was still intact, but at least the process, the process, the process has been halted for now. Although it may stand, stand in advance. halted their advances. They have halted the light. It is, it is a safe here.
of course. Oh, of course. Of course. Standing on the wall, on the top of the tower. Oh, to the top of the tower again. Do I need to like study that or do I need... What should I do with this? What should I do with the light? Should I just expel it or is there another way to save myself from this? All my work has been for naught. God damn it. The people of this city have spirit, I'll give them that. They've not lost the will to fight. I can imagine how torn you must feel looking at that sky, knowing what it means to everyone. And that you're responsible. I still can't believe it's coming from me. <sighs> Neither can I, to be honest. But you heard what the Assians said. The light you shine will warp the world around you, whether you like it or not. Even your Stola and Reen have to concede that point. You're in a corner, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious way out. That doesn't mean it's over. However hopeless it seems, you haven't lost yet. I remember looking up at the sky like this before. Being caught up in a strange kind of calm. It was after we realized we were responsible for the flood, when we resolved to journey to the source by taking our own lives. One last sacrifice, one last fight, one last failure, and then the oracle appeared and, well, you know the rest. There were times in the years and decades that followed when I wondered if we might not have been better off just letting the rejoining happen. That we'd made one last mistake. But seeing that giant Talos stir to life cured me of any doubts I still had. Always, always we took the burden of fighting upon ourselves. That's what heroes do, isn't it? And so we never had the chance to see anything like that. Our people coming together as one. To think that their hope still burned so bright. That they were still so eager to live, they would lift up their fellows, one on top of the other, till they reached the sky. No. We made the right decision. And I can finally feel proud of the part we played in helping this world survive.
well. Come on, then. Huh? As I thought, what happened between us was no coincidence. My story may be finished, but the fates have gifted me a minor role in yours. I suspected as much the moment I realized you could hear me. But it's hard not to doubt yourself when you're the man who caused the flood. I was afraid to do anything more than watch for fear of making things even worse. But no longer. After all, the path I once walked is now yours to finish. For what it's worth, I cast my lot with yours. If you need a push, I'll be right there behind you. If you lose control, I'll do my best to stop you. So, let us be about it, hero. <laughs> oh, I was worried you were up here all alone, brooding and fretting and wallowing in your woes. But look at you! Grinning at nothing like a pollen drunk pixie. You're still here. I thought you'd be back. Hmm. Look at what you've done to your ether. It's a mess. And you have cracks running all through that pretty soul of yours. You can see it too? My poor little sapling. Whatever am I to do with you? <sighs> if you can figure it out to who can reverse this. Or at least to remove it. Shall I yield up my throne? You could claim it. Cut ties with the mortal world. Hide away in the castle. It won't fix the problem. But would it really matter? If any pesky heroes come calling with steel and magic, all of Eel Meg will rise up in your defense. Mm. My crown and scepter are yours, if you want them. Mm. What? Don't give me that look. Of course I knew before I asked that you'd never ever heed such a wicked suggestion. Besides, what would become of my precious and ephemeral flower? Uh, I don't know. That's me. Oh, my dear beloved sapling, you are lost, confused, and have precious little time to gather your wits. I mean... Your kind is always so preoccupied with what lies ahead, and so we muddle your vision with fog and glamour. But such trickery is easy to see through. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but... Uh, uh. Stand very, very still. Think not of where you need to go, but where you are right now at this moment. At this time. In this place. I should try then. Why are you leading me? Huh? Our cairn of crystal. From shadowed hood he watched you go. His ruby eyes with warmth aglow. Ah. See yourself as he saw you. And that shall be the clearest clue. Hmm. Stand in his garden, dear sapling. Ask his flowers what they know, and you will surely find an answer. But what 
will you do with it, I wonder? I'll be watching and waiting. Waiting and watching. That's right. The Crystal Tower. Maybe it expunged the light there. Somehow. I mean, after all, it's, um... It's a very... It's a very tall tower. I mean, it's a very, very tall tower, after all. I think I know what I need to do. This garden. I was not telling you how to walk it. Welcome surprise. No, if only Exarch was returned to us. He was taking the arrival of yours, was he not? Your companion has mentioned have an idea where to find him. 
So the person that asked for they asked for patience. I did not hesitation until I saw that you phone. Then I didn't realize I had no business rushing ahead. So yeah, the delay is no less agonizing. And a key. See, I'm not the only one who burns for answers. The unbroken thread. I'll lock the door with it. I have unlocked the door to the umbilicus. You are free to enter. Once you have what you require, I'll see it sealed once more. Until then, I will remain without. Thank you. to save me, unless... What's that? Uh... A moment to collect my thoughts, I pray thee. Thy true name is Grahartia, then. By thy claims, thou too art a native of the Source, though from an age beyond our own, when the Eighth Umbral Calamity hath visited devastation upon our star. Thou hast, by subtle means, reached across the boundaries of time and space to unsow the seeds of catastrophe, ere its creeping vines drag our champion unto an early grave. In essence, yes. A difficult story to swallow, I am sure. <sighs> he knew of this all along, but... I doubt not the veracity of thy words, not the account of thy coming, nor that of the fated calamity. Yet my mind straineth still to apprehend the enormity of this tale. Wouldst thou favor me with a gradual unfolding of its chapters? Certainly. But where to begin? I should start with those great minds who survived the Calamity. 
Sid Garland being perhaps the greatest, in hopes of staying the unending tides of war, he and his fellows pursued all manner of possible solutions. One of these was rooted in a theory which unified several fundamental principles discovered over the course of the Warrior of Light's adventures. It proposed a method by which one could enter the river of time, traverse the rift, and leap between worlds. Perfecting that idea, however, was a work which consumed their lifetimes. And thus was it left to future generations to decide whether theory would be put into practice. But all the while, the world continued to burn. Hope was a feeble outpost, beset on all sides by thievery and misery and murder. People cried out in despair. There is no hope. We are finished. Mankind is finished. Then others raised their voices in answer. Though we be beyond salvation, those who came before may yet be saved. We will forge a crossroads and pave the way for a different future. By the wisdom of our forebears, we will prevent this calamity from ever having come to pass. The fighting went on unabated, but some few took up Sid's research and labored to realize those impossible ideas. After two centuries of labor, their descendants finally succeeded in awakening the Crystal Tower, an integral part of the process, and, in doing so, roused its caretaker, me. By this stage, scholars had largely established the phenomena underpinning the rejoining, and identified the first as the shard which precipitated the eighth umbral calamity. This grand structure was already capable of storing the energies required to attempt the translocation. All that remained was to augment some few of its functions based upon the theoretical models of Sid and his compeers. And by means of such technologies didst thou affect thine arrival in the first, to an age before this star had joined with the source. Some while before, as it turned out. It is all but impossible to predict how time will flow between one world and the next, and we missed our mark by almost an entire century. But this only worked in our favor. The Sin Eaters could not be defeated without the blessing of light, and summoning the only woman who might stand a chance against them would require decades of preparation. An undertaking of scarce credible endurance. But thou hast kept thy plan from falling into disarray these many years, bordereth on the miraculous. Yet howsoever history be rewritten, thy present self was shaped by events which followed the calamity. Should said catastrophe be averted, the very skein of thine existence will unravel. Surely thou hast foreseen this. I am aware of the consequences. It is for that very reason Sid and his colleagues bequeathed their legacy as an offering, and not an edict. To give all of oneself for the happiness of others, and with no promise of reward, it is a hard thing to ask. Harder still for those condemned to survive in a world which pitted brother against brother. Indeed, you are right to call the execution of this plan miraculous, though the force which held it together was nothing so inexplicable. It was her. The warrior of light has been our unbroken thread. Unbroken? Where others would stumble and fall, she would rise above. Where others would break and run, she would carry on. The Warrior of Light's tale is one of unyielding bravery. To tell it was to feel courage. To hear it 
was to feel hope. It was a breath of inspiration in an age of suffocating shadow. In the histories of a fallen nation was our hero hailed as its greatest ally. In the time-worn pages of a noble's memoirs were her deeds joyously retold. For many, these stories were the flame which warmed them through the coldest of nights. And so it should come as little surprise that the plan found no shortage of volunteers, concerning as it did the warrior of light herself. It was their chance to add their own verse to the hero's saga. She was the lodestar that brought them all together to send their final message back through time and space to her. The light of your legacy was our torch in the darkness. Burn bright again and live. I am merely the bearer of that wish. Come to ensure it is safely delivered. Or sharest thou this burden with me and no other? What wouldst thou have me say? That you will be my accomplice? Twas you yourself who convinced me of your suitability when you spoke of how you learned of the Flood and of your part in arranging Minfilia's journey to the First. Your actions showed uncommon resolve. Twas clear you were committed to the cause of saving this world. I knew I could trust you to choose the right path forward, even if that choice came with a heavy price. What price? When all is said and done, and the last of the Light Wardens lies slain, I will absorb their corrupted ether, and then I will die. Knowing what I know of your companions, not to mention your champion, they will try to stop me. But in saving one, they would save none. Therefore, I implore you to aid me in concealing my identity and ensuring this tale ends as it must. To this end, I would have you take what I have told you of the Calamity and make of it a portent, a prophetic vision you beheld in the swirling chaos of the Rift. Andre. Is this truly thy wish? History remembered the Warrior of Light, as I knew it would. And I will suffer no other to rescue the champion whose star has charted my course. I will see this tale to a happy end, my friend. There has been enough tragedy. The hero, old oh, friend. I don't understand, man. Why would you do this for me? Careful now. If you lose control again, the light could claim you for good. Although it's probably only a matter of time before you succumb to the change in any case. What do you mean to do? I mean, at the end of the day, we, I mean, Emmett and Exarch, if it, both Emmett and Exarch are at the same place at the same time as where my companions are, 
I I think it's safe for me to say I have to take down the answer on who did all this. But I need to have a few words, both with Emmett and the Exarch. I mean Hmm. I mean, either way, I would... Hmm... I could save Exarch, but I was a little also means to have that in it. You know what? There's been enough uh, treachery for one day. Let's him. Let's hunt him down. Diasian mentioned the Tempest, did he not? That's the stormy seas around Calusia to you. His lair must be down there somewhere, hidden beneath the waves. Time to find Emmett. Found thee. Yeah. At that time, had reached us of thy recovery, and thus did we gather with all haste. You guys. Ah. By thy looks, I gather thou hast gleaned that which I came to tell thee. Orionje has shared everything with us. The Exarch's true identity and purpose. I offer no excuses. Bye. When I agreed to aid the Exarch with his plans, it was in full acceptance of the condemnation I would face when my duplicity was laid bare. Yet it is not rancor, but resolve that I sense in thee. Thou art fully intent upon walking thy path to its end, art thou not? If thou canst forgive my deception, or, failing that, set aside thy displeasure for a time, I do beg leave to follow thee. What strength and wisdom I possess are thine to command. Aria J. <sighs> I love you too, but I forgive you. <laughs> Let's go, man. I thank thee. 
doubt not but that I will do all in my power to repay thy kindness and fulfill the Exarch's wishes. I'm sorry, but I don't think this is a good idea. Explain. Leaving the Crystarium, I mean, with or without Uriante. What I did for you won't last forever. There's no telling when the light will break free again. Please, you must stay here. At least for a little while longer, we will find a way to cure this, I promise you. How can you make promises? We don't even know where to start. Alizé, please. You know Reen was only trying to help. Of course I know! I know only too well! But making promises you have no way of keeping is not a kindness. It's a lie. Plain and simple. We've all searched high and low for an answer. And every one of us came back empty-handed. I am not about to stand in her way now. Not after failing her in her hour of need. No. The least we can do is... Alice, eh? We will go with you as well. There is naught to be gained by standing still. Indeed, we have exhausted every other avenue. Lead and we shall follow. If there is any hope to be found, then we will surely find it at your side. Are we all in agreement, then? Is there aught we can do to help? Huh? Though we may not know the whole story, we do know you're in for a fight. And while the Exarch's away, it falls to the rest of us to see the Warrior of Darkness is given a proper send-off. You told them! No. Well, not in so many words. Fine, we didn't need his spell out for us. When the night sky appeared over whichever place you went to, it was harder not to put two and two together. From the moment I heard that you and the Exarch shared the homeland, I had my suspicions. Long had he been waiting for a certain someone to arrive, and I knew at once that it must be you. Exactly. When he went up to meet you, it was clear it was no ordinary visitor. That spring in his step spoke volumes. I could feel his excitement. Me too! That's right! We do not fully understand where you or the Exarch hail from, or why you've all done so much to protect us. But we are deeply grateful nonetheless. So, if there is anything at all we might do to aid your journey, you need only name it. What would you have of us? Hmm. You might have invited them to join us, where they're not so many. Come, they are waiting. What is your will, O oh warrior of darkness? <laughs> Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Uh, leave it to us. We will see X are home safe and sound. Let's hunt that one and only S. Emmet.
this is beginning this is beginning of the end of a whale though. Just like the big one? Why is he in some primal? Need to speak fate. No, that didn't go well. Oh, no. 
rare thing to wake up to. The value rush and so shall it be, shall be done. Be sure to scrub this one's teeth for him upon your return. It's only good manners. It will be done, Your Majesty. Our deepest thanks for your timely intervention. An agreement is reached and your departure is at hand. You wingless ones best hold on tight. May the blessings of the Fae keep you safe, Imba. And just like that, it's all gone back to the way it was. What was you expecting? Hundred years of honey and rainbows? Seeing them Yulmore types wake up and smell the ashes was miracle enough for me. Ah, the magic in the air when that ladder started moving. <laughs> and when that great hulking Talos rose up! Gods! I could live a thousand years and never behold anything so amazing. What the? You see that? Fulfill my duty, I return now to the lake. I have not flown in ages. It was pleasant. May your journey be a safe one, little neighbors. Surprise. Wow. This is a tempest. The breath of Bismarck. See how it swells to form a dome beneath the waves? The waters recede, the tempest's floor is laid bare. In defiance of the blinding sky, this place holds fast to its gloom. The last refuge of he who denies the light with every fiber of his being. You 
you stand at the precipice, hero. Journey unto the heart of darkness. Finish it. All right, we'll continue this. Yes. Till next time. Bye.